Welcome to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I sure appreciate all the listeners who are the only ones listening still. But our Pistons lost tonight 120 to 102. But in today's episode, we're going to talk about will Monty Williams get fired? So first, we'll just quickly go over the game a little bit. Um, if we don't win all of our last three games, so we have to play the Bulls Thursday at home and then back to back in the Mavericks on Friday in Dallas. And then we have to play the Spurs on Sunday. And if we don't win all three of them, we will finish with the worst record in Piston history. So a lot of records have been broken this year. But um, yeah, we were close. We were 75-74, and then they went on like a 30-10 to 10 run, and then we were dead. We got, you know, we got killed. But anyway, let's talk about Monty Williams. So there's been some talk, and James Edwards the third wrote a little column in The Athletic about is Monty going to get fired or not get fired? And there's a lot of things to look at here. And so... Um, he has a contract. He signed that six-year contract for seven seventy-eight and a half million dollars, and that's a lot of money. And so, um, and of course, now he only has five years left guaranteed. He actually has two more years that aren't guaranteed at, added to the end of that. But um, the concern is, I, I think Tom Gores would, and it's been reported that he would fire him if he thought he wasn't good enough for the job. That he would eat the money, eat the contract, and he is. He had a lot of money before, like Blake Griffin. We paid Blake thirty million, over thirty million dollars, not to play, and we bought out Andre Drummond, and we bought out a bunch of players this year, and we paid uh, Stan Van Gundy ten million dollars not to not to work for one season. So, you know, he has the money to do it if he thinks he would do it. So, here's the things to look at. So, what we know is at one point during the losing streak, Gores came and met with the Pistons and met with Monty and talked to him about rotations and said, I don't normally do that. Talked to him about playing the young players. And so he doesn't usually do that. And so that that's a sign. And then there was the infamous organizational meeting where Monty, it was suggested to Monty that he put the ball in Jalen Durant, Jaden Ivey's hands a little bit. So there's another sign there. And it's just as obvious um, I know to most of you, you know, what's happened recently is hard to fault um, Monty Williams. He is coaching a G League roster. I mean, like tonight, Ivy and um, Duran played, and they're good players. But you can't play with a bunch of guys that nobody else wanted, came out of the G League, two-way contracts, and, you know, that's not on Monty. But what he did earlier in the year, so... Obviously, everybody has been well documented on my podcast and everybody else that his mishandling of Jaden Ivey was terrible. And he was our up and coming player. He finished last year really good. And then he started Killian Hayes over him. That's a judgment. That's what coaches do. They judge and they put the best players in the place. And that's that's what it takes. People have to be smart. Coaches um, have to make good decisions. And, and that, that was a terrible decision, a terrible judgment of talent. It's vital for a coach to be able to be a good judge of talent. But Killian Hayes, not in the league. He can't even be the 15th man on any roster in the NBA. And he started over Jaden Ivey. He played more minutes than Jaden Ivey. And that's been talked about. So that's a, a disaster. That's like inexcusable. And then even Asar Thompson, you know, we're playing. Isaiah Livers started and played over Asar for long stretches of the season and what is livers doing now you know and so those are just inexcusable and then there were the infamous uh all bench units that just got killed every game and he never even attempted to despite the outcry from fans you know to stagger and keep some of the starters in the game at times he still never has really staggered Cade and Ivy like I have talked about from before the season started, you can go back to my podcast. I said, one of the two guys needs to be on the court all the time. And that means they, they play together some, but most, you know, they play, one of them is always on the court because we need a score. 
Obviously, we're going to talk more about Ivy later. He has struggled. But um, I think that Monty just has poor judgment. And has he inspired our players? He will talk sometimes about how they weren't motivated or they didn't play. But, you know, especially we needed leadership when we were going through that. Our, our players were not bad enough. We, we were playing um, – more of our players during part of the losing streak. We always have been missing players. Beginning of the season, you know, we missed Bogey, and we, we, we had a lot of players out. We've been playing with, recently, without six of our top, seven of our top eight players, or tonight we played with out six of our top eight play, seven players, and, you know, no team's going to do good. You know, the Oklahoma City, they're losing games because Shea and J-Dub is, aren't playing. Their, their two best players aren't playing, and they're all of a sudden losing games. So, um, yes, you know, so it's not his fault that we're losing games now, but he's not going to resign. So everybody that's thinking that somebody, they just mentioned, well, maybe he'll take a buyout. Maybe he'll take, you know, but he's guaranteed all that money a year, and it's enough to, you know, there there is a possibility you could say I'm going to take a year off because that's generational money that he's getting that, you know, he will never, um, his, he'll never be able to spend it. You know, his family and his grandkids and his great grandkids will be able to spend it. But still, he's not getting paid, you know, as much as he's getting paid, you know, the 70 million, 78 million over six years. When it comes to players, that's nothing. And sometimes players get injured. You look how much money that even, uh, Lamel, not Lamella Ball, Alonzo Ball is, you know, he hasn't played for years and he's still getting paid a lot of money by the Bulls. So there's just a lot of things to be said. And it's just my wish and my hope, the Piston fanatic, that he gets fired. And I, I, I have no confidence going forward that he, I don't blame everything on him. Again, he had a flawed roster. You know, we didn't have enough shooters. We didn't have good enough defenders. And I think now we had... You know, getting Grimes and Fontecchio, I was encouraged, but then they haven't played now. You know, Grimes hardly played a minute. And, the, you know, it even wasn't his fault that um, we just have had a lot of guys that are injured. Monty Morris, you know, he could have been a helper. He's playing for Minnesota and helping them win games. But it's just, it's just hard. It's just hard when he's made so many bad decisions. It's really hard for me to have faith. And his words, when you have the worst record in franchise history and you have talent, you know, again, a lot of the talent hasn't been played altogether, but there's been times when it has. And we've, again, so here's another thing that coaches do and coaches don't always lose the close games. They do a lot of times though. And our team is the worst. We're, we have the worst record in the NBA by far in games that were decided by three points or less. We have the worst record by far in the NBA in games that uh, at um, crunch time games um, where a team is within five points within the last five minutes. That's clutch time. And we are terrible in clutch time. And we had, we played the nuts just a couple games ago. We're right there. And then we get outscored 19 to nothing. And it's not the coach's fault. We're not that good maybe, but the coach has to do something to, get you not to go 19 and nothing. And it's happened so many games that we've choked away and it's part on the way on the players, but you got to have a leader, you know, all those clutch games and all those games that we lose by three, you know, you, you got to win some of those Monty and, and he hasn't. So I would, I would be greatly encouraged. Again, I don't know if he will. I think that uh, Gore's pride that he's the one that made the big move to hire him and he talked him into coming and a lot of us got excited. I, I mean, that's not what wasn't my choice, you know, and, and it wasn't, but I still, you know, we played the Nets the other day and Kevin Ollie's their coach. And then Kevin Ollie talks about he's that, um, that Troy Weaver is like a father to him. And so that, that kind of concerns me that, you know, that's who Troy wanted, but he felt like he, he, Troy's all about these relationships, but I think sometimes his judgment gets clouded by his, relationships and so even whether where he doesn't want to get rid of players because he you know has a relationship with them or he adds a player because he does so anyway I just that's my perspective I, I think that he needs to get fired by the at the end of the season again we have the worst record we're gonna have the worst record in Piston history and our roster was better than that even despite all the injuries 
in the youth is a true thing. Teams that have all the young players, it's not wasn't that that's on Troy that we had too many young players. And you know, I just hope I we have a lot more faith in us turning it around. Teams turn things around all the time. Teams turn things around and they can turn, you know, there's, and there's teams losing right now. You know, we think we're the only bad team. The Raptors have lost like 15 in a row and the Utah Jazz have lost like 10 in a row. And partway, I think maybe they're tanking them. The Raptors, they got their pick as top six protected. So if they, they got to finish in the bottom six in order to get to, you have their pick, even though it's not sure. I, a lot of people thought that the Raptors and the Jazz would try to win enough games so that their pick would convey this year because this is such a poor draft. But the Jazz have lost at least 10 in a row. And, you know, they so their pick is top 10 protected. So, um, again, the, the game tonight. So we had that, you know, we were t within, within one and they went on that huge run, 30 to 10 or something. And But Duran had an okay game, 28 minutes. But he shoot, he's had a bunch of these games where he's like 5 for 12. Instead, you know, he was always like 10 for 12. He's always like shooting over 60%. But he had 11 rebounds, no offensive rebounds. And, of course, he's playing against Embiid. His minutes were limited because he got in foul trouble trying to guard Embiid. He had 15 points. So that's what we're watching for. I mean, what really matters is what I how did Ivy and Duran improve. So Ivy's struggled terribly at the end of the season. And so hope he can get have some good games and get some confidence and at the end of the season. And he's had that the last three games. He's kind of had good games. You know, he's um, against Memphis. He had 31, and he shot like 67% from the floor and 75% on threes and had um, a bunch of assists and stuff. So he's been doing better. So I've been talking about this on recent podcasts about players going up and down. And also, teams go up and down. I mean, you – the last two years, if you looked at the roller coaster ride that the um, Pelicans have been on, it just they look like they're a good team and one of the better teams and a terrible team and then a better team and it's just just there's a lot of ups and downs in the NBA. But Ivy, so the last 17 games, not counting tonight, where he had a really good game tonight, he had 25 points, six for nine on threes, and like in that Memphis game, he was 75 percent on threes. So he's showing some signs, but so he had, but he had a 17 game stretch before he started having these good games and he averaged 16 points a game, but he shot only 38% from the floor, only 28% on threes. He had average four assists and three rebounds. But the 26 games before that, from December 21st to February 13th, he averaged 19 points, shot 46% from the floor and 41% on threes and 4.6 assists and 4.5 rebounds. And I don't know what happened. He was blocking shots. He was getting offensive rebounds at certain times during the year. There were times he, he's jacking up a lot of threes now. And, you know, he, he shot him really well tonight. He had that game against Memphis just a little while ago that he shot it really well. But he used to force the drive, man. He They would lay off him. He'd catch the ball at the three-point line, and he'd be wide open, and he would just drive it right down teams' throats. And I don't know. And I thought some of those times he should have shot it. So... Anyway, um, Fournier had a good game tonight, which I don't think it matters. He's had enough bad games where I don't think that we would ever keep him. I, yeah, when he first got here and he had some decent games, you know, but he had 19, 21 points tonight, 7 for 11, 3 for 5 on threes, 4 for 4 from the line. So real good game. And he's got the potential to shoot, but he's been real erratic and he's had a lot of bad games. And Flynn had a good game again finally. He had... Five, 12 points, 5 for 9, 2 for 4 on threes. And, you know, it's that 50-point thing, that's always going to be a little crazy thing in Piston history that people are going to talk about from time to time. Um, so, cool thing, women's basketball had great ratings and better ratings in the men's game and got to see Caitlin Clark and her team wasn't as good as... South Carolina and South Carolina won the national championship again. They were they have a lot of talent. They were really good. And um, but anyway, Lindsay Harding, you played at Duke. She was the um, head coach for the Stockton Kings, the G League team for the Sac Sacramento Kings, and they won the league. She was coach of the year, and now she will be interviewing for the head coaching job for the Charlotte Hornets. So if it doesn't 
happen now, it's going to happen where there's going to be a woman head coach and we, you know, we always thought there was going to be somebody else, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, we'll close on this note. Chauncey Billups, our Hall of Famer, just got voted in, voted in. And so I saw him in an interview and he said that he played for the team. He never chased stats. And from somebody who watched almost every game, he played for the Pistons. That is true. He never played for stats. His averages aren't that high. He could have scored more. Again, he, he would just kind of pass the ball to Rip and Ben and everybody else. And then in the fourth quarter, he would be Mr. Big Shot. But he said uh, he never chased stats. And everything happened good for him because he played the right way. And that's a Larry Brown thing. Larry always used to say, play the right way. But in his career, 67.6%. The Pistons won the uh, the best winning percentage of any player that played at, in at least 300 games in Piston history, Chauncey, Mr. Big Shot, blah, 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 Billups. So anyway, thank you for listening. Again, please subscribe. Thanks for staying until the end. Be the reason that someone feels loved. And go Pistons.